Okay, today I'm going to be talking about a question that get asked quite a few times. How do I pick out the right paddleboard for fishing? So, there's certain steps to go to if you're really interested in starting to paddleboard fish. Great way to get on the water. Great way to really have a lot of fun out there. First thing you got to do is understand the types of paddleboards. Really, I put them in a class of four. First, you got your inflatable paddleboards. Your inflatable paddleboards are uh, they're pretty good. They're pretty, you know, the advantages of the inflatable paddle boards is that you can store them up, you can roll them up, easy to transport. They're fairly lightweight. Um, downsize, they don't paddle as good as some of the other boards. And sometimes the durability, you know, with hooks and everything, they're very tough material. But after a while, sometimes you might have an issue with the durability. But uh, that's one option. Second option is the roller mold style of paddle boards, which are like your plastic kayaks. And most of them are like a, um, they're, they're more like a hybrid style kayak uh, paddle board. The advantage of those, extremely durable, super strong. The disadvantages are usually very noisy and also very heavy. Another type of paddle board is your fiberglass boards that are made like boats. Okay, they're usually two piece holes like the dragonfly I got here. And there's catamaran style ones and the traditional style ones. Those are very, they find out they're very durable. Um, not as heavy as the plastic ones, but they're usually a little more heavier than your standard paddle boards. But it makes up for it in durability. And then you got your standard paddle board, which is basically like a giant surfboard, foam filled, glass over. The advantage of it is usually the lightest of the bunch, but it's usually the less durable. So there's four things to look at. So where do you go from there? Best thing to do is check with your local paddleboard shop, see what they got, and go out there and water test. And I can tell you, my Dragonfly is great. I love it. You know, it's the best board for me that I've found so far. But Everyone has their opinions on what they like or dislike, so I'm not going to tell you this is the best. The way to find out what you like the best is go out and water test before you buy. I had one guy contact me. He wasn't sure if he's going to like paddleboarding, so he said, hey, I see a department store they got for uh, $2.99. They got a paddleboard. I'll pick one up, try it, see if I like it. Don't even bother or waste your money. You know, not all paddle boards are the same. So what you want to look for in a paddle board, you want to look for their fishing edition. A lot of the companies now do make a fishing edition paddle board. And the first thing you're going to notice about these uh, paddle boards for fishing, they're a lot heavier than your standard paddle boards. Understand the ones they sell in these department stores are just recreational things that mostly for kids. You know, try to stand up on it alone and paddle it. You know, long before you even take take a rod onto it, but even with the higher end um, paddle boards that are out there, you know they got ones that are made for surfing, ones for racing, and then ones for recreational. It's a recreational style that's generally used for fishing, but even those got to be beefed up because you're putting coolers on it, you're putting rod holders, you're putting different things on these boards, and to where a standard paddle board probably won't hold up to that kind of pressure you'll end up damaging it so yes you gotta look at I would look at the fishing additions and yes they're gonna be more weight and usually more money too but it's something that's well worth it the dragonfly board that I got here like I say this is a built like a boat it probably it's close to 50 pounds the way I got it rigged up here but once I get it on the water it well makes up for the weight difference for me to get it to the water is not a problem really once I get on the water, it really does make, make a big difference. I like to find a clean entry to the uh, boards. I don't like a surfboard style front end. I like when it has a V, kind of cuts through the water, it gets rid of the whole slap. Some things to look forward to, to. But let's get back to the water test, because that is the most important. you got to feel comfortable on the board. So if you got a board or you're thinking about getting a board before you even put a rod or a cooler or anything on it, take the board out, just you your vest, a paddle. That's it. 
anything you want wet, your keys, your wallet, anything at all, don't have on the board. Because what I want you to do is get out here and start paddling the board around. And you just get comfortable with paddling it. It's like riding a bicycle. Your first time you ride your bicycle, you might fall. But once you get used to it, man, I tell you, you go all day long, you know, it's almost impossible you fall off your bike after you get used to it. Same thing with a paddleboard. So get on there, paddle it around, get used to it, try different strokes. Now, after you've done that, what I want you to do is stop the paddleboard and kind of move around on the board because you're going to be fishing. You're not going to be just paddling all the time. You're going to be moving around. You're going to be turning around. You know, you might be reaching behind you to grab your rod. So I want you to kind of move around the board and see how, see, see, see how much area you can move around in, how steady it is. Now for the next part, I want you to sit there and see what it's going to take to flip the board. I think most people are afraid they're going to flip boards. That's, it's just, you know, people are just afraid to get on boards and think they're going to flip them. Generally, they're pretty stable. So I want you to get this board out and rock it. See what it is. Take it to the point where you actually flip the board. That way there, you know what the board has. You know what it's capable of doing long before you actually do it. So it's good to get it out there flip it and then make sure you get back on it you need to be comfortable with all this before you load your fishing gear your tackle and everything else on it it's going to save you a lot of time cleaning reels rods and reels so those are some of my tips on how to get a you know a fishing paddleboard you may like one that i don't you know it's it's preference your size will have a lot to do with it your physical ability might have a lot to do with it and uh, where you're fishing will have a lot to do with it. But understand, if you get a super stable board, and it's a wide, super big board, and it's super stable, it may not paddle good. So if you get something too wide, too stable, it's like paddling a barge. If you get something too narrow, like a racing style kayak, super fast, but it's not gonna be stable enough to fish off of. So everything's a compromise. What you gotta do is find that balance of stability and speed and comfort. When you do, hey, you got it. You're out there paddleboard fishing. So I really, really uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please click right up here. Subscribe to my channel. A lot more tips, techniques to come. And uh, always appreciate you all watching. See you next week.